Hello and welcome back to the National Unified Tabletop Sports League. I am Kip Carter. And I am Owen McBaker. And we are nuts. We're nuts. All right, let's take a look at today's matchup. The game is scythe by Stonemeyer Games, and the players are the crew from Gamers Remorse. All right, it looks like Sean drew the Nordic Kingdom with a mechanical background. Brian draws the Rusviats with the agricultural background, and Eric draws the Crimean faction and the engineering background. And don't forget, Kip, the players are using both of these boards to define their strategy. Sean needs to draw on both the unique abilities of the Nordic Kingdom and the mechanical background to make his victory started and drive on to victory. And how you achieve that, Tim? A player wins by placing all their star tokens on the upper left hand of the board. Each column represent, represents a goal that can be achieved in order to score a point. Those achievements can be as simple as getting the people to love you and maxing out your popularity score. Maxing out your power track, building all four of your mechs, maximizing your workforce by hiring eight workers, completing a secret objective, building all four buildings, enlisting all four enlistment bonuses, or defeating an opponent in battle. Right you are, Tim, but that really only gets you the stars, and stars are only part of your score. To really score high in this game, you need to do a whole bunch of things. That's right, Owen. If we look at the left side of the game board, you can actually see how the scores go together. Depending on your popularity score, you score additional points. Oh, well, bloody hell, we've already started. Let's tune in now. Not to worry, Owen. It appears as though this is the first round of gameplay. Eric already moved out. Sean moves as well. Brian moves out as well. Each of them have chosen to move a worker and their main character. It's important to note that beside the Rusviat faction, all players must alternate between actions. Eric chose to produce as he was unable to move again. Sean chooses to bolster to increase his military strength because he's not able to move. Being a relentless Ruski, I'm going to move. Brian's Rusviat faction is able to go ahead and move again per his faction ability. And that moves him on to an event card. Encounter. Admire a retired soldier's prized gun. Get one combat card and one popularity. Hire the soldiers to relieve, relive his glory days. Pay $2 and gain two power and two combat cards or steal the mech while he's napping. Pay three popularity and gain one mech. Yes, please. I'm gonna pay three popularity. It's gonna drop me down to one. And that's exactly the kind of card you want to see this early. It allows him to get a mech out within the first two rounds. That is gonna be huge. The other two gentlemen have quite a bit of work ahead of them if they wanna catch up to Brian and the Rusviats. It appears as though Eric is following suit and also going for an event card. He takes the move action again. All right, share some good news from home with travelers. Gain two dollars and one popularity. Trade a cow and eat steak for dinner. No. Yes, please. <laughs> Pay two dollars and gain four food. Convince the soldiers that the patterns on the cows are coded maps from the enemy. Pay two popularity. Gain two combat cards and three power. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna go for the, the good guy. Good guy's a lame. Good guy award. Oh, well that hurts indeed. It would have been nice to see a mech for Eric. However, in the first round, money doesn't hurt. It looks like Sean is following suit and also moving and trying to get a hold of those sweet, sweet event cards. Event, event me up. Before you go, go. Conceive a plan with the patrolling troops in the forest. Gain one combat card and one popularity. Relieve the soldiers. I will pay three popularity to deploy one mech. That just seems like the smart way to go. Indeed it is. A free mech isn't half bad. Now he's choosing which one to take. Yep, it looks like he's taking the one that allows him to cross rivers. No, not cross rivers, cross lakes. This is a unique Nordic ability. Actually, if this guy were here, I could move here since that's a lake. I believe. So. And then. It's kind of cool. 
Oh wow! Brian is definitely using that Rusviet ability to continue doing the same action. He moves for the third time in a row, moving both his mech and his main character. Eric seems to have caught on that his character requires a lot of resources, and so he's alternating between moving and producing. Now that's so quite interesting. Well, Eric is working on producing people to then know. allow him to farm more. Yes. Sean is purely focusing on resources. He's going for wood and oil. Perhaps he's focusing on a certain resource he's interested in. Perhaps he's just not realizing he should be focusing on getting workers. This is a mistake in my opinion. It appears as though Sean may have heard you. He's looking for the village so he can start producing more people. Let's take a closer look at Sean's actions to see if we can figure out what he's trying to do. Sean has been alternating between moving, bolstering, and then producing. It's believed that he bolstered because he didn't have two workers out there, and so it was a high-cost inefficiency. And of course, this is only the fifth round. Anything could happen at this point. Eric is 50-50 split between producing on food and steel. Based on the number of steel pieces he has out there, it looks like he's going to be trying creating a mech since he's already behind both the Rusviet and Nordic factions. Looks like Sean is finally getting more people, but he's also working on an upgrade by getting all that oil. Don't look now, Tim, but it looks like there's trouble in paradise. It looks like Brian's starting to say that Sean is encroaching on his territory. Is there going to be a mech fight or not? We will soon find out. attack Sean? There will be combat this turn. So I might as well make you... Well, if you attack, then you'll win. So you're going to attack me on a lake? No, I'm saying you will attack me on the... Sure, I, I, thought you're, I thought you were debating whether to attack me now. So I'm saying if I wait, then you'll move to the factory, then I'll attack you. Oh, I got gotcha. you. factory. Sure. It makes more sense for me to go to the factory now. You'll attack me, I'll get kicked off, but I will get first pick of time. What happens when I lose? You go back to your base. I go back to here? Okay. Oh, like a steely-eyed Putin. Brian looked right in Sean's eyes and said, I'm doing it. I'm going to the factory. I'm getting another building. There is most certainly going to be a fight soon. Oh, I can feel it in my blood. That's right. But before that happens, Brian gets to look through the deck of factory cards and choose the one that will most be beneficial to him. He plays it right next to his player board so he can use it as a fifth option of an action. That's right, and it looks like the factory card that he chose will help him build mechs for nearly the price of free. There's no doubt in my mind that Brian will have a whole army of mechs soon. And that can only help this soon in the game. And speaking of mechs, it looks like Eric is finally building his first mech. Cost him four steel, but hey, a mech is a mech, right? <laughs> Now this is an interesting strategy. Brian is actually provoking Sean into attacking him. It's possible that Brian just wants to return home for the price of free. But I don't know why you'd taunt him. Sean wants to go to the factory anyway. It looks like Brian's getting his wish. Sean shows the move action. He moves a worker. To the wood area. And... Other 
There Fine. seems to be quite a bit of debate here. Yes. Oh, Sean goes for it. Sean attacks the Ruspians on the factory location. Now, I'm sure as we all know, the way a combat works in this game is each player wages a certain number of their army's strength. They will lose that amount after the final reveal. Brian chose to lose zero army strength, and Sean chose two. He also played a card. Think you were going to, but... So Brian's character returns home, and Sean's character remains. The battle card is discarded. It looks like Sean is also revealing a secret mission. I reveal Let's this now. Name. Control the factory at the end of your turn and have the highest power of any player. Ties are okay. Did it. Need I remind you, it's only the seventh bloody round and we're already in the third epic. Sean was able to complete two stars in one move. That was huge! He was able to both beat Brian in battle and also complete his secret mission. And now, Sean gets to look through the list of factory cards and choose the one that most will help him achieve victory. I tell you what, Owen, if it were me looking through that deck in his position, I'd be looking for something to end the game quickly. The larger the lead you have, the more likely you are to piss it down your leg. Sean needs to watch himself or else he's going to end up with wet trousers. Brian continues to use his Rusviet action to move around. This time he's grabbing yet another event card. He Tamper with the death draft documents to keep filming together, gain two dollars and one popularity. Deliver conscription papers and payment, pay three dollars to enlist one recruit. Strong arm the family and take the farm, pay two popularity and gain one worker and three food. Cannot afford that, sadly. Uh, recruits are these, right? Yes. Would it start where I am? You know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to tamper with the draft documents to keep the family together. So I'll get $2 and one popularity. Popularity is getting off. The All right, that completes round seven, and we begin Epic 3. As you can see, Sean took a giant uptick as he completed two objectives by besting Brian in combat, and Eric lost a few points by building a mech. Early on, Brian and Sean benefited from early mech buildings from event cards. Aye, well, this is the part of the game where people start really focusing on the production chain. They need the resources in order to build up to the objectives later on. So you're going to see a lot of production. Eric produced, Sean produced, and now Brian's producing. Soon enough, you'll start to see more objectives rolling in. And there it is. It appears as though Eric is able to create yet another mech because he chains it with his production. I think that's a gun on the front, right? Try, but... So... I'm more intrigued by the fact that it has wheels and legs. Yeah. Right. Now that's interesting. This is the first building we've seen in the game yet. Uh, Sean has a factory that allows him to really double down on buildings. So we'll probably see a lot more buildings out of Sean. Get a building. This one will get me more power as time goes on. This one gets me more heart. This is the classic dilemma with bu with building buildings. Sean is trying to systematically determine which option he's going to select for the rest of the game, and thereby build the building on that action. When you remove a building, it opens up another benefit from taking that action. In this instance, he took the armory, which will allow him to gain more bolstering every time he produces that action. Two different things. 
Move him there and I'll move And the second part of a fa factory back. action is to move a uh, one unit twice, one therefore unit being thing. able to move that oh, much cool. further. Sean uh, moves his character into so an event space. That. You immediately win the game. Herd the sheep on the hillside for an afternoon, gain two food and one popularity. Serve lamb for dinner night. Pay two gold to gain one worker and three food. Use the sheep to trip up a passing mech. Pay three popularity to deploy one mech. Oh, I can't do that. Yeah, I think you have to be living the requirements. Lame! Uh, I, could be, I could get one worker and t three food for two dollars. That's not bad. But I'm really not good at getting money right now. So, gain two food and one popularity. I guess I'll do that. I'm going to herd sheep on the hillside for an afternoon. Now, some might not have no noticed that, but Sean is really focusing on his popularity. He knows that it's going to get him a better score at the end of the game, and he also knows he's leading right now in objectives. He's going to try and close out the game as soon as he can, and he's trying to get popularity before it happens. Plus one hex per movement. Here. And Brian takes his factory action just like Sean did. However, his factory action allows him to build mechs. And so that's what he's doing. His second mech for nearly the price of free. Mm -hmm. My Wayfarer moved from a territory or home base to any inactive factions home base. Eric's really hurting by not having a factory action, so I, we see him moving over here, and perhaps he's trying to parlay that into moving up to the factory to get himself a factory location. All right. Um, perhaps you spoke too soon, Tim. I have no words, Owen. I'm going to pay the one gold. Sean appears to be changing his action here based on Eric's action. It could be because Sean is over near Eric's area, and Eric just moved a mech there, threatening Sean's physical space. Sean seems to be waffling here between several options. He doesn't know what to do. Yeah. But if he already had a bunch of food, he would have zero value in attacking you to get food. Sitting Yep. Either way, I think I'm going to go with the one heart to raise me up one popularity. Sean continues to focus on popularity. It's quite an interesting strategy because if the others catch on, they're sure to be seeing him as a target. And there's that upgrade. It looks like Sean was trying to parlay both the ability to get more popularity as well as getting that upgrade in. To get cheaper upgrades in the future. And now Sean went ahead and made it more attractive to go ahead and trade, but also go ahead and make it cheaper to do upgrades. He will certainly be back to do upgrades. But never mind that, here comes Brian with the Rusviets building yet another mech. That is three mechs in what is this, round 10? Unbelievable. Give the newly recruited soldier a lift to his new assignment. Gain two dollars and one popularity. Hire the soldier's family to work for you. Yeah, this one's good. Um, pay two dollars, gain one worker, and any two. Ooh, that's really tempting. Throw the crestfallen family out of their house. Pay two popularity. Build one structure. Oh, that cost me all my popularity. I'm gonna pay two dollars, gain a worker, and two resources. There really is no wrong answer on these event cards. They all offer you some sort of benefit, so they're worth getting if you're near them. Eric goes ahead and produces again, likely setting up for another mech build. What's really interesting about this move is Sean is threatening the territory of Brian, but he doesn't have any battle cards, does he? I mean, that's like going to war without any guns. And the thing is, I don't know if Sean's bloody brilliant or barking mad. Regardless, it appears as though Brian took the bait and is slowly moving away.
Brian just upgraded to make it easier to move and cheaper to enlist. And that's round 12. As you can see, Brian has somewhat increased his speed. However, he isn't picking up all the money he should be taking. That's the dotted line. Sean is slowing down a little bit as he's trying to increase and upgrade things. And Eric is flatlining as he's trying to build all of his mechs. At this point, I'm not really sure what Eric's trying to do beyond throw around his weight. Brian's got to be thinking that he's going to come in and sweep him. But Brian has so many workers, it wouldn't really make sense. Sean's on the other side of the board, so that doesn't make sense either. So what is Eric doing? Sean places his windmill on the oil location so that he can gain an extra oil each round. And since it was a factory action, Sean also gets to move two locations. Of course, he's going to move his character. It is in Eric's area. Where does he move? Let's find out. Oh, well, that's interesting. He moved right next to where Eric's location is. Eric has to be sweating bullets. Take a ride on a ferry as the wind tussles your long, flowing, luxurious hair. Gain two popularity. Bizarre. Trade with the caravan for a variety of goods. Pay $2 to gain any three resources or pillage the traveler's wares at gunpoint. Pay three popularity to gain any five resources. Um, I'm gonna take a ride on the, the ferry and tussle my long flowing hair. Can you raise me two more popularity, please? Yeah, he's been breaking that rule. Yeah. What? What yeah, have I been doing? That's what I thought. You can move on to lakes. You can't yeah. cross rivers. Yeah, I agree. You just crossed this river. Didn't no, you? I went from I was here last turn, and then I went bump bump. Okay. I keep moving back to my rivers, okay, or my lakes to go across a river. Halt! We have a delay of game, believed to be rule breaking on the part of Sean, the Nordic side. We will review gameplay footage. The call on the field is rules lawyering denied. Play continues. Gotcha. I've done that every time. So, for instance, I was here mm -hmm. and I moved on to there. Then I moved here. Well, how does it read? It says he moved to and from lakes and retreat onto adjacent lakes. I've been moving to and from lakes and then onto adjacent yeah. locations. So I think that does work. But adjacent lakes. Location. Retreat to adjacent lakes. So if he has to retreat, he can retreat onto a lake. Are you saying that a lake is surrounded by a river? No. no a lake um, is a tile with that picture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's trying to say I'm cheating. It's a crazy powerful yeah. ability, and I'm just monopolizing on it. But I thought you were crossing it like that. Nope. So then I move twice, yep, so I'm done. Yeah, because I thought you were here too. Mm -hmm. This nope. is one of those awkward moments where everyone at the table oh, thinks no. you're cheating. But I somehow by the grace of God, the camera's through. actually captured it. And my turn here. And I shored up the shore. I control five territories surrounding the same lake at the end of my turn. That means I had to create three workers. That's terrible. Yeah, the other one's worse. Sweet, dude. You got one! <laughs> Although well, Sean might leave. be laughing. He shouldn't be laughing too hard. Brian's actually worked up quite a bit of a team there. He's got three mechs and nearly all of his workers. He is right on Sean's heels. And as we saw at the last break, he actually has a higher score. I don't know, I need all three of them. 
No, I just need two. Move one of them there, and this guy over to this lake. Uh, am I? Yeah, I don't have to do that. I have to do some three, some of the upgrade. Lose one popularity. Let's move them down. Popularity trail. Brian appears to be min maxing his mine. four so as to get the best turnaround. Meanwhile, Eric is doing what I think he's doing. He's about ready to get a yet another mech. He has fought hard for these mechs, paying four metal per mech. I mean, if you think about it, yeah, there it is. This is his third mech. That is 12 metal he's paid for it. <laughs> It's real interesting to watch these three different players play. Brian seems to be using his mechs to move around his workers so as to get the most work done on the specific resources he needs. Sean, however, seems to be playing this game where he will set and forget each of his workers, not moving any of them around, trying to increase his efficiency. However, it's costing him in that sometimes he needs resources and he has no one working it. And then I still don't have enough for that. And here you see it in action. Brian's using his speed max to pick up and move his workers around, dropping them off in the key areas he needs them to work. It's somewhat genius. Does that make sense, Brandon? Yes. I can't use that one, right? So I have to work enough. This is a move I don't really understand. Eric keeps moving over to those, to those abandoned areas over there, but then he just moves right back. I mean, what is he trying to do? Is, is he trying to go to the factory? If so, you should do it. But by moving back and forth, you're just wasting actions. It makes no sense. Also, I get one more power. Also, I have two oil I'm going to trade in for an upgrade. Here we see Sean's early upgrades paying off. He upgraded so as to reduce the cost of upgrading. Now he is on an upgrade chain. Let's see what he does. Looks like he took one off of bolstering so we can get more money because his factory requires money. And then he's going to reduce the cost of enlisting, it appears. Remember, enlisting allows you to gain benefits when other players perform a second action. Well, I didn't really see it until now, but Brian has been hurting from not getting enough food. And so it makes sense that he would move across the river. Although it is closer to Sean's Nordic territory. We'll see what happens. And there it is, Sean using his Nordic ability again to move across that lake and pick up yet another event card. We're seeing a definite habit here. next five turns I have played out. That's sad. Wow. That's impressive. That's oh. sad. Help an anxious farmer find a missing part for his mech, gain $2 and one popularity. Or con the farmer into selling you some scrap metal under market value, pay $2 to gain four metal. Or steal the newly built mech when it's ready, pay three popularity and deploy one mech. Oh, that is so tempting. Um, I want you to deploy a mech logo here. I know, it's so tempting. And then I could cross rivers. I've worked, been working so hard to increase my popularity. So I think I'm going to help an anxious farmer find a missing part for his mech. I'm going to gain two dollars and one popularity. Yes. Although that's not the coolest move, it's actually the smartest. By moving up to that next level on popularity, he's going to gain a lot of points, and two dollars never hurts. 
And here we are with the round 16 breakdown. As you can see, Sean has skyrocketed by increasing his popularity. Eric continues to drift somewhere in between, and Brian is slowly increasing. I will say it once and I'll say it again. What is Eric doing? He's just moving his mechs around. He's not actually fighting anyone. I don't understand this tactic. Um, so I'm going to produce... And on the bottom part, I still don't have enough food for that, so it's interesting. Right. I am well. That's the single feeling I feel oh, whenever I play oh, this. Oh, sorry, game. I forgot to finish this. Oh. Well, it looks like Eric's doing a last minute enlistment. Uh, this is the first enlistment of the game. What it lets you do is gain a benefit whenever anyone else yeah. performs a second action. Uh, as denoted by the enlistment you choose. What action is that? Do you get something if I did it? Hmm? It's all the same. It's Unless. the right one. Unless. Oh, yeah. I... So why do you get two Because he placed it up there. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to remember how it sure. works. Because now if anyone to the no. left or right of him so does the anyone... bottom action, the enlist. Yeah, if they do the enlist, he gets. No. Yeah. Which I did not. Are you done? Yeah. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. So I am paying one. And I am bolstering. And then I am enlisting. Looks I'm like Brian's enlisting as well, which will immediately gain the benefit for Eric. Uh, he immediately gains a battle card. Wow. And do I get it when I reveal it? Or do I get it just... I don't really understand the actions that Eric has taken. If we look at the scoreboard now, we look at round 17, you can see that the enlistment that Eric bought cost him dearly. However, it will help to regain its power later on in the game. Brian similarly bought an enlistment, but it actually didn't cost him anything. And then Sean continues to rise. No worry, Owen. I'm sure there's method to his madness. I'm not so sure about that, Tim. Oh, another tough hit for Eric. By producing, he's actually losing army power. I don't know why he's doing it. Perhaps he just needs them resources. While well, you're struggling with Eric, I'm struggling with Sean. I'm not really sure what he's doing. He asks all these questions on his turn. However, in the end, he ends up choosing something that's pretty brilliant. Here, he doesn't know what he's trading. He doesn't even care, it seems like, but he's going to do it. Let's see how it turns out, I guess. So you're, you're trading two wood for two food? Yes. But would you really prefer just one extra food? Because you could turn a wood into a food, and then you could turn a food into a food. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you could it's, see it's just, like that. Yeah, it's just yeah. a way to cheat the system. Like, Two know. foods fine. So I don't really, okay. I haven't really moved to be active on food. Yeah. Okay, so I'm over here. I've got. Oh, I need to gain one power mm -hmm. for that guy. And I'll trade him in two oil for an I think the method to Sean's madness is that he's just chaining upgrades together, thus cheapening his second action for everything that he does. If I do this, it makes it really cheap for me to enlist. So we'll do that. Actually, that didn't really matter. So I did that. I like both of those options. Okay, do one down. Oh, I just did the upgrade. Yeah. So that's that. Very good? Yeah. All right. Well, so I like Eric getting free cards. I'm an <laughs> Now this is interesting. You can actually see Brian increase in his army strength turn by turn. He just keeps taking the same action, utilizing that Rasviet ability to not have to hop around his board. And it looks like Brian may have caught on. He saw how Sean shot up in popularity, knowing that Sean's going to try and end it soon. So Brian does not want to be left behind. 
No, I'm trying to get to the point where I'll benefit off of your turns. Technically, you always prepare for anything from the first True. turn. True. What I feel like I'm doing now is what I feel like should be done as early as possible at the end. So whenever you guys do something like that. Fair enough. I just now realize. So really your strategy is to try and do these We should probably bring up stone. that Brian's board, now the agricultural to board, uh, he gets for coins for, for just about every second action he does. And he has been skipping that phase sometimes, not picking up those coins, which is costing him dearly for the final score. As stated earlier, the dotted line actually does show how many points he should be earning by this point. I pay one, and then I gain three. It's a pretty sweet deal. They're arguably my favorite thing in this game. You're my favorite thing in this game. Am I? Thank you. I feel the same way. Get up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, so you're done? Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't have enough money to do stuff. So, this happens every fucking time. Why would? All right, we're gonna go over here. I can, go, I can produce three things, which is exciting. So three hexes, which is all of your hexes. two oils. Yeah, all of my hexes. Everyone gets a hex. You get a hex. You get a hex. Look yeah, at that supply hex. chain. Yeah. I mean, he's got several that. people on oh, every so hex. Basically, he's yeah, getting yes. people. He's getting wood. So, He's trading it for food, popular. and he's getting oil. He basically has all the resources that he needs at his disposal. And then, okay. That is so really that, well and done. Then I have two food. Oh, I'm gonna give up the two food that's on me. You can't need a worker. Oh, that really? was a good catch by the other players. You can't actually use resources unless a worker is with them. I've been upgrading. I have to get more oh, oil gotcha. there. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna use this two food. And I will enlist, so that should be. Hey, hey Eric, give me the card. in people's ears. Well, look at that move. This should perhaps interest Sean, because as you can see, it looks like Brian is amassing forces right across the river. This could be a full-scale invasion. What is happening here? It looks like Eric's up to his old tricks trying to build another mech, but wait, wait a minute. He can't do it because of the fact that he doesn't have a worker on the same place as the steel, just like what Sean tried to do. I'm going to take back that. Yeah. Yep. Control Z. And now it appears he's trying to do a rerun, redoing the entire turn. Hi, Tim. Accidents can happen and often do. Curse you, Jamie Stigmire, and your rules. Yeah, rules. Not really. I love you, Jamie. Get a room. Are you going to do that? Right, so Classic. I can put two here because there's two. Yes. Yeah. Or you would pay. I already did that. An infinite so did you take this down? Yep, I took, the, took that down. And gotcha. You're on top of things. And then I have no oil, oil so when he's not in the under thing. Only a lot of cool I can get money. Ooh, I can move, build the thing, and get money back. Sweet! I'll do that. So two moves. Do a move action. Mm -hmm. uh, move this guy out of here. You're just freaking me out. Really. It seems Sean may have come to his senses and realized he doesn't even have any battle cards. If he went up against Brian, he would be sorely in trouble. And here we have him, moving actually a little bit closer into Eric's territory. Eric has to be feeling the heat. Spending three woodens to build a thing and get two money. Alright, getting money. 
And here Sean is doing what he loves to do best, that is chain actions together. So here Sean is actually being able to make a building and getting paid for it. The difference is when you move more, I don't know if I really understand this thing. So we're going to build this. We'll build it right there because it doesn't really matter. Where was I? I, well, I did that. I got my two money. I built the car. That's it. Right. Return. Oh, did anyone have a thingy on build a thing? Nope. Okay. Oh, yes, I do. Why do I talk? Back to you. Right. That's what I was hoping. All right, I am going to produce. Mm -hmm. So, perhaps Brian's previous action wasn't meant to be so much as a threat, so much as to just gain a whole crap ton of resources. Look at all that wood. Do I have to pay that even for normal production, or only when I take people? Yeah. Pay hey, the displayed cost in all of the uncovered red rectangles to produce resources in different territories yeah. equal to the number. Okay. Yeah. So I go down one part. Yikes! We've, I've been doing that wrong. I know to spend two wood. I don't like these are my I'm just going to almost it a few times and not retroactively pay for the thing. So I'm going to build. And I build, I get two money. Two money, we good. Are you building? Yep. Yeah. Wait, no, upgrades is where I did it. So I so. And when I build, I get a heart. It's hard to believe with such an explosive start. We're still in the third epic. Sean hasn't earned yet any more stars. It's kind of been stalemate here. Perhaps something can speed up here in the next minute or two. Oh my god, it finally makes sense. He had to get six workers, mechs, and other things all on the same hex. That's why he was compounding them all there. It makes sense now. But look at that. He moves several of them over to an open area adjacent to where Sean's workers are. Sean has to be sweating bullets now. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, what did you do for your special? Or did you do a bottom row action? Not yet. Not yet. Oh, you still are in the middle. Okay, no. sorry. So I'm about to enlist though. So I'm gonna do two, pay two. My faction ability is once per turn, you may spend one combat card as if it were any resource card. Right. So wow. Two. Damn. So I enlist. Oh, I've never been getting my coin for my enlist, so I need. Oh. This is my, my second time, so I'll need two Keep coins. Going. This is actually quite a friendly game, other than the occasional threat of calling each other cheaters. Here they're actually letting each other go back and get extra points and things. That's not normal in a championship like this. through the combat card deck, finding the sixes. Yeah. I mean, when he discards a two? Yeah. Like, uh... No, there's a useless like, one. There's twos? Yeah. <laughs> I have negative ones. <laughs> Where do I use this? Okay. I'm gonna undo that. I'm going over here to my special building. Paying two monies, building my last building. Oh man. There it is. We are now entering the next epic. So exciting. He finally built his last building. His factory kind of becomes useless after this, but he did it all the same. I don't know. Now I get a heart because of my special building, and I get to move twice. Also, that's all four of my buildings out there, so. We're gonna do it. Uh, what is going on out there, <laughs> Owen? Changing your blue stars. To I would ignore it. Oh, okay. I would ignore it mostly. Okay, well, it appears to be horse than around of some sort. Crying, 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 Mrs. Sullivan. I'm, I'm aware. But have you seen that in the concert? So I have. Caroline's fine. I have, but I don't remember that song. Anyway, that is my turn. All right, my turn. <laughs> yes. All right. Forgotten bands of the early 2000s and late 90s. I'm it actually produce. opened for Kiss. Oh, that's, that's way more exciting than what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> really weird combination. I mean, I saw them open for, well, no, some other local band opened for them, actually. 
Oh. Man! Oil and wood city over there. And I get two coins. And I would build. Let's build a mill. That is the end of the 21st round, and as you can see, Sean has been spiking systematically uh, through his levels. Brian nearly caught up at one point, however, uh, Sean completed building his buildings and just rocketed again. He also increased his popularity one more level, which only helps him out a little bit. Sean, at this point, is in danger of being a runaway leader. Let's see what the opponents have to say about it. I have no word to build, so turn over. All right, we'll go to, ah, I need to produce is my thing. I'm not excited about those prospects. Curses, things happening. Okay, we're gonna do this. Uh, I'm gonna pay one money to then, with trade resources, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna go take the two hearts instead. People really love me, that's what I'm into. I also gain a power because people love me so much. Then I'm going to use two oil to upgrade. You're such a loved dictator. It looks like Sean's staying true to his overall goals here. He is increasing his popularity as much as he can. He is increasing his army strength. And of course, he is completing more upgrades. That's really exciting. That is an exciting prospect. Yeah, that was one of the first ones I did. I don't need to build stuff anymore, so I could care less about that. So instead, I will move it down here, I guess. Okay, I am done. I'm a little surprised that they're still enlisting at all. Enlisting tends to be a early game game. Right now they're doing it so late that there's hardly going to be a benefit. There's the expense without the big payoff. You may as well keep your resources. So then I pay one coin for that. I then will pay a food. Because I am enlisting. You. Enlisting? Yep. I get two coins. Go. And I'm done. I'm going to move. So one. Two. Oh, Sean better be praying to his Nordic deity. It looks like Eric's on the warpath and he's headed right for Sean's workers. What is he gonna do? Is that it, or are you still doing bottom action? Uh, I can't do it. I don't have three. Okay. In that case, I will also move. Or did I want to produce? Crap, I want to produce. Yes. No. Ah! This game. This game, I tell you. All right, so I'm going to do the move action. So I'm going to go underground. Hmm. I mean, it doesn't really matter where I go, I guess. I'll go here. No, it's, you would go underground to your tunnel. This is exactly the same stuff Sean always does. He doesn't seem to fully understand the rules, and oh, yet yeah, it yeah. ends up being all right for him. So here he's going underground, and he would actually travel back to his village, which would actually be better for him. Instead, he thought he was having to go right next to his village. Uh, Sean's an idiot, savant, or just an idiot, I don't really know, but it works out for him. I did not understand that iconography, which is pretty obvious once you explain it. Pet the reindeer and flirt with the locals at the refinery. Gain two dollars and one popularity. Just my style. Come here, reindeer. Stock up on oil for the journey ahead. Pay two dollars and gain four oils. There's one other thing we haven't really talked about on Sean's strategy, and that is his ability to navigate across the entire board and pick up as many events as possible. He is masterfully using his Nordic ability to traverse lakes in order to give access to all of the events, or at least a lot of them. It's been masterfully watching him to be able to do that. One popularity, please. I'll go over there. So that was just that part of my action. I really only mm -hmm. moved one was, thing so yeah, far. One movement. Yeah. We got two to get. Yeah. So I'm going to move this guy and this guy here. And that's three. Yep. Done. And that was just the movement phase. Yeah, I don't have a word. Continue. Proceed. Right. So I'm going to move. 
Watching Brian's turns is like trying to watch a carefully choreographed ballet. All these intricate pieces spinning around and changing places. It's really kind of mesmerizing, but quite confusing, actually. Yeah, but you've got to admit, it does seem to work quite well. Aye, well, that it does, that it does, and that's the really confusing thing. But as long as Brian understands it, that's what matters. Alright, I'm done. Oh yeah, produce. So, put down one. One. Four woods. Wow. Woods. Two foods. That's it, because I don't have any of the oil to upgrade. Okay. Um. I will produce and probably regret it. Lose a power, lose a popularity. I'm going to gain two food. Two wood? Question mark. Two oil. And then... Yes. And then I'm going to pay two food to enlist. I think this was a mistake. He should not be enlisting. It's not part of his strategy. There's no way he's going to close out four enlistments by the time the game ends. He should focus on either workers or completing upgrades. Those are his two bailiwicks he needs to stick with. Do I want to enlist that guy? Actually, I'm Six fives. This is just a coin or is that a point of some sort? It's a coin. That's a lame one, right? I guess I get a coin every time someone deploys a mech, which is only going to be at me at this point in the game. <laughs> I have a mech. I have a mech. I'm going to do this time. Every time someone builds, I'll get a heart. I still don't think that's very likely, but hey. I have two builds. Eric has four. I'm going to do that to gain two of these. Okay. Done? Yes. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to pay one. I'm going to take two cards. It's funny to see how both Brian and Eric are quite focusting on increasing their military strength through battle cards. And Sean hasn't had a single battle card since the beginning of the game. I wonder if either of them realize it. I don't think they do, Owen. Otherwise, they would have confronted him quite a while ago. Indeed, he's been playing that pretty close to the vest, which is smart for him. As you can see here, Sean has been slowly increasing his lead by gaining more and more stars and gaining popularity. Nice. Brian has been increasing as well through monetary means, but he hasn't actually been collecting. His straight red line actually shows him dipping down, and you can see that Eric is almost passing him. And here's Sean using his special factory action to increase his heart, move twice, and then take that event token that Eric was about to score. And... Okay. Thought you grabbed one. Spend a day planting crops at the farm to earn some goodwill, gain two food and one popularity. Dislodge a stubborn plow and earn a favor from the farmers. Gain two... Pay two to gain one worker and any two resources. Salt the earth and force the farmers to enlist. Pay two popularity to enlist one recruit. I'm going to do the first one. So raise me up one popularity and I'll gain two food. Well, Eric can't be too happy about this turn of events. I know that Eric wanted that event card. Sean goes ahead and takes the popularity and the two food. The two food actually sits on Sean's character, thus further enticing Eric. That is a dangerous position to be in, especially since Sean has no battle cards. Yeah. 
gives me power. Me too. Out of nowhere, Brian's able to tie up Sean with a number of stars despite Sean's lead head start in there. And I think we're about ready to witness the fourth and final mech for Eric. Good on him. There we go, that's Sean's bread and butter. Go ahead and max out that popularity track, earn that star, and you'll be on your way to victory. In classic Sean, he chains it with an upgrade, so as to get both the upgrade as well as the bonus. I'm also building. So if you build, you be here. Yay! Oh, you you need blue up one as well. What on earth is Brian doing? Look at all those forces on one hex. What in the world is he thinking? I'm not sure, but it's about time to do another recap. As you can see, Eric has actually taken the lead from Brian uh, for second place. Sean is actually dipping down after his last enlistment. He seems to be running out of steam. And Eric seems to have found that steam. I don't know about steam, but I certainly know about fire, and it looks like Eric's about ready to fight fire with fire. Sean has no battle cards here. What on earth is he going to do? And do you have people's army? So like for me, I have people's army. So if I have workers in combat, I can... As in last time, each player goes ahead and wagers some of their army's strength and a battle card. Here's the reveal. Sean wagers nothing. Eric wagers two and a couple of battle cards. Those cards are discarded. It is at this point where Sean could actually retreat to an adjacent lake. However, he must have forgotten about it, so he returns okay. home. Now I'm going to get a star. That's right, and Eric wagered quite a bit here, so he earned that star. So he goes ahead and puts a star up list. top. That's two for him. Yay. Let's see what else he does. So I'm going to spend these two food that I just got from Sean. And this card. Two coins. Three coins. And do you want to draw a new card? Not yet. I will worth exchange. Sean seems unfazed here and, and goes ahead and bolsters. bolsters. He goes ahead and takes the three increase to his uh, army strength, maxing it out, getting a star. And he also takes an additional heart. This brings it to the fifth epic. Sean has four stars out there. I leave Sean within striking range to max out his popularity as well, making him a triple threat. I'd say it's three. I'm going to guess. 
Not to be outdone, Brian fires back with his fourth and final mech, earning him a star as well. All right, a lot has happened in the last round. Let's go ahead and do another recap. Sean appears to be teetering. Uh, he's spending all of his resources trying to close out the game. Meanwhile, Brian has come back with a vengeance, and Eric no, continues six. to rise. That's why you have six stars. Bolster. Uh, I have a penny on Sean. He's going to keep it. Eric's act of building actually gives everyone a heart, and Sean was one away from getting another star. So Sean goes ahead and levels up to the next star, entering the sixth epic. It's funny, you can actually, Ryan's thoughts in this, in this video here, you can see him puzzling over the fact that all of his people are on two hexes if he only had another turn to spread out. But Eric doing what he did actually made the game end one round sooner. Yeah. I'm going to go here. I'm going to produce, right? Mm -hmm. So first things first. Oh, well, maybe this won't make it produce. I don't know. Uh, lose a heart. And then I'm going to put this guy out there, mm -hmm. which... And that's star. game right there, isn't it? He put out his it's last and final worker, which puts his six star up so there. They go ahead and complete the round. He takes his second action, so on and so forth. Yeah, every two okay. resources based on your heart. Okay. So I have two there and two there, so it doesn't really matter. Unless, of course, Eric, Eric gets more time and then he take over my workers to get more resources. So I'll put a more internal. <laughs> I'm glad we both saw one. <laughs> and now we each get a card. Wait, grab a card, grab a card. Completionists. Oh, I also get two more coins. And so the game ended in the 28th round on the second turn. You can see that Sean had this really interesting zigzag effect where he would zoom off and then come right back down because he invested quite a bit in, in infrastructure. Uh, you can see that Eric was pretty well level until he finally completed his mechs. And you can see that Brian was slowly increasing the entire time, mainly because he was agricultural and he was earning money every action he did. All right, let's Which go ahead and take a minute to yeah. listen to the players Pretty talk shop, strategy, and other thoughts. Oh, yeah. Is that why you were going to do a clean sweep to, like, well, slow me down? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It would remove, uh, as well as, uh, I was planning on moving all my mechs and leaving, like, one behind or a worker behind. Mm -hmm. So that way I, I'd have more hex, hexes controlled. Sure. Yeah, so my plan, I did not see that he was that close to winning. <laughs> yeah, that, I did, so that's why I started moving on. Yeah. Slowly creeping Because my next turn, I was going to move out and claim one, two, three, four, six more territories. Using speed mechs and dropping people. And that's why I was asking about. Yeah. Things. So that, that cost me 18 points. Wow. 71 points. I only had 46. <laughs> 31. <laughs> So yeah, my strategy was get out early and then try and exploit my use of ability to use adjacent legs like yeah. mad to traverse Which across the board. Is way more useful than Yeah, see you guys power. got the good ones where you can get the mechs right out so you can get your your river oh, walk the, right off the back. Yeah, that yeah. thing. Sure. Yeah, so and I, I had to build all of my mechs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like and with four like four metal, it takes a while. Yeah, yeah. it takes forever. So I didn't you, build a single. You would have gone to the factory. Yeah, no given. Yeah, well, I couldn't get there right away because I couldn't river walk. Yeah. Yeah. He needed to get a mech out in order to yeah. river walk. Yeah. Because yeah, my initial plan was. So I, at that point, I just forget yeah. about the factory. Yeah. Because I'm not going to be able to get. Yeah. To Up it. until I got that bonus, my plan was go there, produce. Then I would have four workers go here. Produce. So then on my third turn, I could have dropped a mech. I just turtled. Yeah. Sure. That's all I could do. So then once I got the the Wayfair, mm -hmm. I was moving over there. And then I forgot that he could. I forgot you had speed. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, right. 
Yeah. So that's what's interesting with this game is, and I, I love variable player powers. Mm -hmm. So it forces you to pick a strategy off the bat. And every time we've done random players, mm -hmm. I have only ever been these people. <laughs> Really? I, yeah. I think that's just fate saying that you're Russian. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not a fan of their player power. Like, I think it's really good early game, mm -hmm. but late game it's, it's mediocre. But I, I do think they are balanced, but maybe. To be fair, I never use this person's yeah. player power. Which my workers no, can but swim across We, we have cool. different mech powers, and I think uh, that's the best mech power. But only if you exploit it correctly. True. It's, it's better, like, with my river walk ability, I'm very limited to how I can cross. Yeah, me sure. too. I can, only too. Move, yeah. I can only move to Tundra and farm. But yeah. being able to use lakes, I think, is very beneficial. Yes. Yeah. Well, then my Wayfair came in pretty handy. I can go to any... Oh, yeah, that, that was really cool. Especially once yeah. you started moving workers. Yeah. I was, was like, like, oh, man. man. Yeah. My biggest complaint with this game, though, is that Sean has not painted his miniatures. Hello, my friends! It sounded like Groo. Groo? Not Groo. Groo. Sorry, I had an extra tea. <laughs> you like... must forgive me! 